Good morning everyone. In continuation with our class on this course use of English that is GSP 1201/2201 for my group that is group C which comprises the department of allied health sciences, dentistry and clinical sciences. We are here to have a lesson module 3 that is reading comprehension and summary having done with uh, module 2 which centered on the grammar tenses clauses sentences part of speech or what we refer to as word classes and so on first before we go to discuss about reading comprehension we should first and foremost get to know what reading is all about reading is very important as far as language acquisition is concerned it is one of the most important or one of the most important aspects of the language skills that is listening speaking reading and writing as important as it is, it gives readers the ability to interpret a written text. In other words, writing and speaking are expressive language skills because they have the ability to help us produce the print and speech while reading and listening are receptive skills language these four skills language are divided into two we have productive and we have receptive writing and speaking are said to be productive because we produce sounds and the ideas while reading and listening are said to be receptive because while reading or listening we are receiving ideas being forward by the writer or speaker then what is reading comprehension literally comprehension means understanding therefore when you are doing our reading for the sake of comprehension that is you are reading critically to decipher meaning hidden in a text before you as a reader. It is your concern as a reader to read and understand what the passage is all about and specifically, accurately respond to questions that follow on that passage being given to you. There are generally two types of reading. The first is intensive reading, which has to do with reading for a specific information and other textual details. If you are given a text, a novel or a play or any essay to read, or you are given with the purpose of finding a specific information that as a reader or as a student, the examiner direct you to uh, based on the questions given to you all that comes at the end of the reading passage to look for specific information these are obtainable in most of our secondary school exams like Neku Waek Ujam you will be given a passage after reading the passage the writer or the examiner may ask you some questions that really you wants you to specifically look for some information in the text this is uh, intensive reading while extensive reading has to do with wide reading that involves a longer text uh, to have a global understanding and may be done for pleasure so the difference between extensive and intensive reading is that intensive reading majorly is done for the purpose of passing exams while extensive reading is done for the poor, for the sake of pleasure and to have uh, you know, knowledgeable about life of everything 
that's why you are engaging in extensive reading and it is called sometimes wild reading so having said that or having seen the two types of reading that is the extensive and uh, intensive reading we now come to see why do we read for comprehension what is the purpose of reading comprehension some of the purposes include though not limited to the following number one it is done to grasp the sense of the passage when we say the sense of the passage you mean the overall objective of the of the passage of the text given to you one of the purpose while you read is to get sense to be aware to understand of what the passage is all about the theme or preoccupation of the passage or the overall message the reader uh, the writer wants you to come across to generalize from um, apply simple logic to the passage that if a passage talks about so many things it is part it is part of the purpose of comprehension to test your ability to arrive at a logical conclusion of the overall or generalized theme or preoccupation of the passage number three to get the meaning of part and whole of the passage sometimes reading comprehension tests students ability to really get what is the parts specific information of the passage and what is the general or overall message of the passage to understand the passage essential features for every passage or essay it has to be so it has to it needs to have some characteristics or features which it is the function and the purpose of the uh, comprehension passage for uh, uh, that uh, a reader get to know these specific features of the text to identify the keywords and their grammatical functions you know for those who have written their work and nephew you might have come across a question that asks you to specifically identify a, grammat a grammatical function and name of a given sentence or phrases so this is a one of the key aspects of reading comprehension to appreciate facts from opinions it's also trained the student to be able to differentiate between what is facts and what is opinions and how rhetorics are used to differentiate facts and opinions or how the writers use rhetorics to manipulate facts and hide facts in the construction of the different opinions in the text to identify sentence types and speculative expressions and it is also one of the purpose of the comprehension to help the students understand the figurative expressions uh, figures of speech like metaphor simile suspense onomatopoeia and so on are used as stylistic device in the in the written text so at the end of your reading an examiner may ask you to identify the kind of the types of sentences we uh, use in a given expression or the kind of prefigurative expression then we need to know the steps we take in reading comprehension we don't read in vacuum we just we, we our reading of a text shouldn't be unorganized it's not just that uh, you're given a text you start reading thinking that no you need to get be, do it step by step take it one by one so that you arrange your ideas logically and you follow the flow of the ideas in the sentences that will give you prerequisite knowledge and how you follow the arguments the style and the rhetorics of the writer at the end of the day get your uh, 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 understanding of the passage better the following are the steps to be taken in reading comprehension there are three main steps which are before you now first and foremost you should understand what to do before reading during reading and after reading so that you get the most out before you read identify the structure of the texts that is how the text is being structured 
from the phrases, the sentences, the clauses, the paragraphs, and the overall passage. You should be able to decipher and to read critically before you even start reading, identify which kind of structure the, the writer use. We need to be careful and also observe the element of the text in order to identify the structure from the title, subtitles, illustrations, captions, boxes, words in bold type and so on. All these are communicative as far as text is concerned. When you see a word or a phrase is put in boxes or is written in bold, or there are too much illustrations, then you have to pay attention because it is possibly the way the writer decides to send his message uh, to you. So after identifying the structure of the passage, you then during the reading be active. That is, you have to define your reader project and you are starting to lose yourself in reading the text. Here again, certain attitudes facilitate understanding of memorization. Locate the frame, locate the idea. First and foremost, during reading, be active, be attentive, and be focused. You should not be, be distracted by too many examples as given by the, by the writer. First, while reading, pay attention to the topic sentence in each paragraph. That will help you to locate the frame and the key idea. In mostly, key ideas come in topic sentences. It's not necessarily that topic sentence comes at the beginning of a paragraph. We normally have each paragraph has a topic sentence, then the supporting sentences. Some writers may decide to start with the supporting sentences and end their paragraph with the topic sentence. It's a very good start of writing. While some start with the topic sentence and end with the supporting sentence, and some hide their topic sentence at the middle of their paragraphs. So it's your task as a reader to really get to know where the topic sentence and how the sentences to uh, support the topic sentence. After reading, then you rephrase your ideas. To rephrase does not mean paraphrasing, no. Paraphrasing, as you know, is to put somebody's statements or ideas into your own words. Use your own words to explain or write other people's idea. So rephrasing is different from paraphrasing, let alone copying all the key ideas to the chain on a piece of paper. No, rephrase is to explain what you have retained from the text in your own words. It is also, it is virtually or perhaps similar to paraphrasing, but it's not. Because rephrasing has to do with critical explanation of what you have understood from the text using your own words. Then, having done with comprehension and its steps, as well as how to identify the key sentences or topic sentences, here we come another aspect of this lecture that is summary. A summary is a brief statement or restatement in your own words of the main idea of a passage. You should understand the difference between summary and comprehension. Comprehension. When, when you read, you understand, you'll be subjected to write based on the question given to you. Sometimes the grammatical, sometimes figurative, sometimes textual, sometimes uh, 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 rhetorical. But summary has to do with just using your expertise in grammar to summarize the key ideas you have read, you have read in the text. For example, you may be given an essay of 500 words and have five questions that want you to use simple sentences to summarize the whole passage. For example, in most cases, Summary writing requires the, write, the reader 
to answer the questions in just simple or complex sentences. So, when you write a summary, you condense the writer's ideas into a few concise sentences, I have, as I have explained. A summary is always shorter than the larger text because it omits the examples, aside, analogies, and rhetorical strategies that writers use to add emphasis and interests. This is according to Krishna and Model. Then, procedures for writing summary. Understand the text. First and foremost, read. Understand the text. Be acquainted with the text, the rhetorics, the style, and the way the writer put all the themes and preoccupations of his text. Number two, create a plan. Since you're dealing with a very technical, in fact, summary is more technical than comprehension. Because in summary, we don't lift sentences or closes from the directly from the from the text but in comprehension to some extent you may it may involve lifting direct taking some parts of the sentences to form your answers but in summary it's purely technical it's purely your own words that you put the key ideas into your own words to give in just sentences and uh, tell your answers so in this in these early readings, take a half sheet of drafts, write down the plan chosen by the author of the text, find the original structure, the idea that drive each of the main lines of the text and make sure everything is well integrated. That's how you come up with a summary reading. Right. The length of paragraph should not depend on the length of the idea in the text, but on its importance, spend a little more time on fundamental concepts less or much less to the point of completely obscure and illustrated paragraph of a concept just explain before or after so when you are writing be careful be concise and direct and focused proofread after writing you have to read reread and uh, check what you have written completely nothing forgetting nothing added nothing supposed and that your text is clear well written with a good writing style, understandable by a reader who has not read the original text, rigorous for a reader who read it. It is very important. Even though you are expected to write in concise and clear sentences as well as being brief, that does not mean you will give a very plain uh, answers. Sometimes you need to, your answers need to be rigorous to a reader of that particular passage, even though he has read the passage, by coming across your simple sentences as a summary of the main text, it has to give him a tough time before he's able to grasp what he has already known. And to you follow from the formulas, you can use defamiliarization. That does not mean you, uh, you, even though you increase the length of perception in the case of the reader, but then it adds flavor to the answers given. The following six steps are useful as far as reading uh, in summarizing a text. List the main ideas for each paragraph in the text. Underline the main idea statement that includes the most important ideas from the text. That is step two. Step one, you list the main ideas from each paragraph in the text. You know how passage is developed is from words to phrases, phrases to sentences to clauses, clauses to sentences and sentences to paragraphs, then paragraphs to the main ACO text. So each AC must have at least two to three paragraphs or even five as the case may be. So each paragraph must have main sentence and supporting sentence. Try as much as you can. You list the key ideas of the main paragraphs. Then underline the main idea statement that includes the most important ideas from the text. All this will give you clues after reading the whole text to put your answers into an integral part of the answers. Combine any ideas that could go into one sentence. It's your task Step in step three as a reader when summarizing. To combine key ideas so that you avoid being uh, unnecessarily writing too much uh, and being concise and precise. 
step four number the ideas in logical order one lead to the other that's we use uh literary term plot plotting then you arrange sequentially your ideas from the beginning to the end one lead to another as you know plot is sequential arrangement of events or ideas one leads to another so even in summary based on the flow of the paragraphs in the main text arrange your answers also to flow like that write your summary in one paragraph that's as the quest as the as you are asked to do so edit your summary is very important a very good writer is a has good editor or is a good editor